here you are, Linfield boss, in the heart of McLean's, sponsoring the Glens, your big, big rivals. They can talk about Crusaders and all the other teams in Clifton, but the Glens are still your big, big rivals, aren't they? And even you know that in your short time in and the hot seat of Linfield. No, I knew that. Um, obviously, going down my first experience as manager at Boxing Day, so that was a... It was, a, it was a strange experience considering what had sort of happened to the pitch, what, what, whether the game was going to be on, whether it was off. Um, but I looked in the players and the players wanted the game on, I wanted the game on. And thankfully for us as a club, we went down and uh, got a big three points. David, you've been in the hot seat for approximately, let's say, three months or so. You know, What's it been like? Um, it's been an eye-opener on both fronts for myself. You know, you can do all, you can have all the experience as a player, but when you step into the hot seat, um, things become a little bit different, especially after when you take the job. Uh, you lose the you lose the games in November. That was tough, and I'll make no bones about it. I had tough times as a player, but you feel even more responsible because you're picking the team, you're making the changes, you're trying to get the players ready for a game. So you go home after every game, especially as the game started mounting up. You know, you're asking yourself the questions: Are you picking the right team? Are you doing the right things during the week? Uh, so that was tough, but thankfully we came out of that in the December and uh, picked up a little bit. Is it frustrating, you know, whenever you look at the lecture results in November, because you probably always felt, with your own judgment, I have a good team here mm -hmm. trying to get out, not getting the results, and then suddenly, almost like the turn of a switch in December, it happens. That was a frustrating thing, looking looking at my squad, and uh, no disrespect to all the other teams in the league, you know, I would handpick a lot of my players to play in the best 11 I know we probably haven't hit the height yet but man for man and especially on paper I've got a lot of good players in the squad a lot of quality players who can do a good job in different positions uh, two go two strong goalkeepers two three strikers now who can score goals so um, that was a you know it's frustrating November but one highlight that we did get out of that was the emergence of young Paul Smith who um sort of came from nowhere, he's been in and around the Swifts and I only had to look at him two or three times in the Swifts in the one game to, th to think that you know he could step up and, uh, and do a good job so uh, thankfully he's come in, he's now established himself in the, in, in the team and in the squad and um, he was one of the bright positive notes coming out of a really disappointing November. Does that give you a real lift whenever you, you, you see that and you, you go by your own judgement, your own eye, you know, with all your years of experience and you pull a player like that in that no one else seemingly has spotted and then you put him in and he delivers? That must be a great a great lift for you. On a personal level, it must be a great lift. For me, uh, bringing him in was... For me, I went home, uh, he made his debut against Cliftonville uh, in the league and a little disappointed that we had lost the game 2-1, I think. I stated after the game that my only disappointment apart from losing the game was not giving Paul Smith probably a little bit longer in the game because when he came on for 15-20 minutes he gave us a little bit of a spark, he gave us a little bit of energy. Um, so for there, but you know, a lot of credit's got to go to you know Alan Dornan who manages the Swiss at the minute, a mm -hmm. legend, uh, and David Chisholm, the academy director. So they sort of brought him through, uh, they got him to this, that probably to a certain level that it was probably the next step was into the first team. And probably wasn't as, as soon as probably he or they had expected, but I'd seen enough in him to sort of bring him in. And I say a lot of credit goes to the boys who'd done a, a little bit of the groundwork with him, but you know, I took the chance and put him in, and hopefully he can stay there. Now, you're at Windsor Park, National mm -hmm. Stadium. You adorned that pitch so many times wearing the green jersey for Northern Ireland and some great moments. What What's the difference when you walk out then? as the manager, in other words, like, you know, what are the fans like to you? Fans have been brilliant and I know going through over the years, a lot of Linfield managers, especially the successful ones like Roy Coyle and David Jeffrey, um, have taken a little bit of flack even though they've won so many trophies, but I knew that, I expected that and to be fair to them, the tough times in November, they backed me, they backed the players, they got behind the team and they got the just rewards sort of in December when we started picking up uh, picking up points again. So they, they've been great. They've been understanding it's maybe a new manager coming in. Um, different ideas, uh, which is going to take time. So you know, they've been great. The board have backed me immensely since I came in. So it's, it's a learning curve. And 
you know, I never ever claimed as a player to be the greatest player, but what I did have was a little bit of a heart, a little bit of a desire and a wee bit of commitment. And if I get them three three things out of the players that are playing in my team, you know, that'll be enough. What's it like with opposition fans? You know, because there you were a hero for Northern Ireland. Now you're the manager of uh, the dreaded Blues. You know what I mean? We know all the whole history and what teams think about Linfield. And, you yeah. know, the love to beat Linfield. Everybody raises their game to beat Linfield. What's been the reception from uh, the opposition fans of all clubs? Um, probably, probably varies. Um, and to be fair to them, and when I took the job, um, I knew you'd probably come in for a little bit of different opinions and different fans but one thing that I am and I always have been is respectful um, I say I don't I, I expect the same back but you know I don't go out to beat you know our rivals Cliftonville, Glen Torn, Crusaders you know I don't want to I don't want to beat their fans I want to beat their team and make my team successful and make our club successful um, so the fans will say the majority a lot of the teams that we do play against are Northern Ireland supporters who I'm sure still go to Windsor Park and hopefully you know, I gave them a lot of memories. But um, one thing that I can't do is take away what I'm trying to do at Linfield. Um, I'll always be respectful to all the fans um, and say, well, you get that back or not. I don't expect it back, but what I don't, what I wouldn't like is you know, the fans to turn on me for what I you know, I'm trying to achieve now in my uh, managerial career. Whenever you played as a player and you would score a goal, and maybe you'd win a match or you'd lose a match, you go home and, oh, well, you won, you yeah. lost. Uh, is it a different attitude now as a manager? You talk about the responsibility there, trying to look after the last. Would you go home and really, really analyse what went wrong or what went right? Yep. Uh, I did that as a player uh, quite a bit. You know, I was always my worst critic my biggest critic, uh, whether I had a good game or a bad game, I'd, I always look for things that I could do better. But as you say, now the responsibility is in my hands to, to make sure the club's successful and the players do what you try and coach during the week, to take that onto the pitch and cross the white line. So you do, you heard after the games, and you know, I have Alfie Wiley there who's, they say, sometimes you take a lot of, sometimes you, you don't enjoy the wins the way you should, but the defeats hurt more after a game. So. Sometimes I find myself watching games on a Saturday night in the house. Uh, we have somebody there who videos the games. So instead of maybe sitting down, relaxing, having something else, switching off. As you did as a player, as you say, you could go home, maybe have a few beers. Chinese, as a player, you know, there's not really much you can do until the, the next game comes around. But as a manager, you're straight away switched on to the next game, the next training session. How can we make it better? How can you make him better, the players? So you switched on straight away, you're watching the games and we cut and clip the games and hopefully show the little clips that that I feel that we could, that, that we as a group and we as players can improve on. So it's you know, people say it's part time Irish football, but for me since I've been in now three months it's it's a full time job really. A full time job and you're now clearly, you know, the glints in, in your eye, you're clearly enjoying it too. Mm -hmm. No matter about defeats, no matter about victories, you clearly enjoy your football. So how would you reflect on your first three months and what do you see for the future for Linfield Football Club? Hopefully now my bed and end time's gone. I knew straight away when I took the job that, you know, you don't get a honeyman pair here at Linfield and every point drops, you know, it's crucial. Um so I think we've dropped enough points, uh, but we've also won enough games. We unfortunately lost in the County Antrim Shield to, to Balamina. So um, after the game, I said to the players, you know, watch, stay out on the pitch, appreciate um, Balamina winning the cup, but also have in the back of your mind that there's also a cup final, the Irish Cup final to look forward to, with a league campaign that we're still well into. Uh, so, uh, you know, look at that, have that as your goal to see you picking up winners' medals because that's that's what Linfield is. It's it's always been a successful club. Um it hasn't been recently. But my driving force and uh, and as should the players be is to watch Balamina winning silverware on our pitch uh at Windsor Park and you know, take that, you know, hurt from that and get gain the the drive and the passion to go and continue to win uh, hopefully trophies for this for the for the club.
You talk about the league, and I'm not going to put you on the spot by saying that Crusaders looked as if they've wrapped up because you will fight to the very, to the bitter end. But uh, overall, the standard Crusaders uh, certainly deserve to be at the top, and the, the standard of the league. Are you surprised by the standard of the league? You know, I have often said that the Irish league is much maligned and it's a better product than a lot of people give it credit for. Would you uh, subscribe to that point of view? I uh, wasn't surprised by the quality in it because I know when I took the job, people were asking the question, "Does he know enough about the league?" But I have always been close to the Irish League, I've always been close to a lot of the managers in the league. So it wasn't as if I was coming in from a completely different environment where I didn't understand the league. Um, surprised by the quality? Definitely not, because you only have to look at some of the boys who moved to England recently. Uh, Stuart Dallas, who's Joe Gormley, Julian Boyce, who's flying at the minute. So, um, you know, there's always been quality in the league. Um, so, you know, surprised by that? No. But um, there's enough quality there. Crusaders are the top of the league, the champions. I went to watch them on Saturday. And I'm sure they'll tell you the same. They were poor in the first 40, 42 minutes of the game. But as champions and champions do, good players do. And they've up enough match winners, not only in the team, but on the bench and probably not in the squad down there, uh, to know that if they're well in the game at half time, they've got enough quality to go and win the game. And unfortunately for Glenn Torn, they had a man sent off in the second half. And Crusaders as I say, do what champions do, go on and win the game. Whenever you look at look at it realistically, uh, obviously uh, you want to finish as high up the league as you mm -hmm. possibly can, but it's interesting you talk about the Irish Cup. Would you see the Irish Cup as your most realistic opportunity for success this season? Um, that's a hard one. You know, th th we're nine points behind uh, Crusaders. We've got to play them again. Uh, th they've got to play uh, uh, Cliftonville a couple of times, away times at Port it down and call rain, you know, tough games. So, me as a manager, I'm still sending my players that realistically, yeah, we can still win the league. Um, but it's not really in our hands, it's in Crusaders' hands. And if they mm. keep picking up points and coming back from as they did on Saturday, uh, two goals behind to win the game, you know, it's going to be hard for us. But then, realistic, realistically, coming into the Irish Cup, it is a, it's another opportunity for us. Uh, we will have a tough tie against our man in the crown, uh, and they will be given the same amount of respect as whether well, we're playing Cliftonville or Glen Torn or Crusaders. They will be given the same that we'll have them watched. Um, hopefully, we'll get some footage of them, and hopefully, we'll find a way that we can get them to Windsor Park and go out and you know, put ourselves in the next round of the cup. But it is an opportunity for the club and me to go on. Say the players were hurting after the Balmina game. People say, well, it was only the count down the field, but. I was disappointed that we didn't put a little bit of silverware in back into the club and I know the players were disappointed so that's why I made them sort of stay, watch and feel hurt by it. Well they say that you learn more in defeat than you learn in victory mm -hmm. about any sort of, and no matter what the sport. Mm -hmm. yeah, are you enjoying it? Loving it. Um, say, w once you come out in November time that was, that was tough. Say for a new manager, a young manager coming in, that was a tough period and I openly admitted that. that it hurt me when you kept losing games. I was getting a little bit snappy with some of the TV interviews after. And like somebody asked me the question, "What do you think's wrong at the minute?" And I think my response was, "Well, we keep losing games. That's part of the problem." Mm -hmm. So, um, but apart from that, it's been great. It's a learning curve, and in my eyes, I'm still at the biggest club in the country. I know people will suggest otherwise and have their other opinions, but in my eyes. I've been given the opportunity by the board to come in and hopefully make this club successful again. So there's been so many excellent managers in the league. I spoke to one the other day, excellent field, Roy Coyle. Um, and again, he more or less sort of said the same thing about the, the county on the field. You know, sometimes you learn a wee bit more from yourself and your players, how to respond when you do come to another big cup final. So say, it's all a learning curve and I'm loving it. And if we do get the right players on board, get the, the right mentality into the, the team that we have at the minute, I think we can hopefully be successful. And Warren Feeney's moved on out of Newport yeah. County and he, he got the wee bit of luck, John Sheridan left to go to Oldham. And uh, have you been in touch with uh, Warren? I know you're very close to him yeah. and stuff like that. And a great opportunity for him too after uh, managing Linfield. It is. And, you know, even when Warren was a manager at Linfield, again, I was in contact with him quite a bit because we have that friendship going back quite a number of years now, so a lot of time, a lot of respect for Warren. Um, it's a great opportunity for him now to go in um, to a good club in England. So hopefully they go in, 
stabilised the club. He had a good start in his first uh, first game there as full time manager. So I wish him every, every success really. Uh, obviously he's taken Andy Todd in from from Linfield, uh, a man that he brought here again. Disappointed to see Andrew leave, but it was a decision I knew I would come eventually when Warren did get the job. So uh, we understood the circumstances and and, and wished him well. You talk about wishing people well, obviously, but all hope that Northern Ireland do well. And it was mm -hmm. interesting you touched on the fact that, uh, and Ronnie McFall actually earlier touched on the fact that there are so many lads now in that uh, Northern Ireland squad under Michael mm -hmm. O'Neill who have come through the uh, rigours of yeah. the Irish League and now he heading for the Euros. Mm -hmm. Like That in itself shows you what a standard we have in the Irish League. It does, and it also gives the other lads in and around the Irish League at the moment. So I touched on Paul Smith, uh, the young boys, but look at some of the players, you know, you Gavin White's, uh, a Crusaders, a uh, young boy with a lot of potential. Cliff and Bill have uh, two or three young boys with potential. So these these are the type of lads that you do call rain. We, you know, we play call rain, they have, you know, four or five youth products coming through, which is great for call rain. So these are the type of lads, and say so no disrespect to the clubs here, but eventually you'd hope that they would have the mentality that they'd want to play in England or Scotland, um, but I think it goes back to when Michael O'Neill had always says, you know, he watched a lot of Scottish games, and um, sometimes now it's beneficial for our younger players now, maybe playing the Irish League instead of going at 16, 17 to English clubs where they're playing youth team football, and then coming back at 18, 19, hopes dashed, confidence dashed, and maybe don't enjoy football anymore. So they stay now with the clubs here, uh, they get 50 to 100 games here. Then they're experienced, they're first team regulars, so it's an easier step for them when they do go to, you know, English clubs and you know make a make a huge success of it. Now you were a goal scorer supreme, and you take a look, the likes of Liam Boyce took him away yeah. to, to get his feet at Ross County, and now he's uh, thumping in mm -hmm. the goals. He won the award in Scotland there as the Player of the Month through like that, and that's bound to be a boost for Michael and as we head to the Euros. It shows you that players coming from here can make it at the at the highest level. I think when Michael looks at it at the minute, one one of the positive things he will look at at the minute is a lot of the players in and around the squad are playing games, and especially for the forward players are scoring goals when given the opportunity. You know, you even have to go down to Billy McKay and Will Grigg who are in and around the squad to scoring goals. Uh, Liam Boyce, Josh McGuinness, Kyle Lafferty given the opportunity will score goals. So uh, strikers are there. Um, Liam Boyce is on fire. Uh, it did take him a little while to settle in. I think now when you see him, when you, especially when you see him on TV, um, Liam's always had the ability, but now it looks as if he's got the, the fitness, he's got the mental edge now where he wants to go and show people why he's a good player, and uh, he's doing it. Well now he's got the mental edge, you need a bit of a mental edge in the coming months, and uh, it's lovely to hear a, a player of your ability to come back to the likes of Linfield and just praise the league, praise yeah. your club, and just you're, you're so obviously happy in your position as the manager of Linfield Football Club? I am. It was an honour and it wasn't one that I had come back here for. I came back to take the 16-17s the role to, to, to maybe gain a little bit of experience in that department. But um, given the opportunity, and I think it was after the, I think it was the Latvia game, or whenever it was, Latvia, the Greece game, mm -hmm. um, when Northern Ireland qualified, I sort of tongue-in-cheek sort of chatted the one of the Linfield board members would you sort of sit down with us when Moran was leaving. I was like thinking, yeah, no problem. But you know, sort of escalates from there, and you get asked, they up, would you would you fancy the job?" And um, so it's a job that you know I certainly couldn't turn down. You know, I didn't want to. You know, I knew Linfield were going to. Linfield will, and again, this will be up to debate. The the you know Linfield will be successful again. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I leave it to somebody else. David Jeffrey was in charge for twenty years. You know, I didn't want to be waiting twenty years for the opportunity to manage to manage Linfield. So I thought if if it wasn't now, it might never come around again. And if you hadn't taken it, your father would never forgiven you. No, so it gives <laughs> it gives him so my local team Kelly are struggling at the minute. So I think he was getting a wee bit frustrated going to watch Kelly and getting beat every week. So I said to him during the November time when we were losing games, I think it's him, I think he's a jinx. So if he keeps coming, to, he's he's a kill eye one week. They're getting beaten, and he's coming to Linfield. We're getting beat. So I was nearly going to have to ban him from coming to watch games. But uh, thankfully, he enjoys it, and he's been, you know, my biggest fan from such an early age. So I think it gives him 
a wee bit more. I think there's a wee bit more pressure on, especially if he sits with in with the fans, um, especially the Linfield fans who are you know prone to you know, get agitated sometimes mm -hmm. during the games, whether you're winning or drawing or whatever else. So, uh, but he enjoys it. The um, son comes along and watches the game, so gives them something to look forward to on a Saturday. Well, David, I think your father is one of many fans uh, internationally and locally as well. We're delighted to have you on board with Thanks Linfield. You, delighted you're involved in the Irish League and delighted you joined us here on McLean's TV. Thanks very Thank much indeed. Cheers, Bye. Bye, David. Good man.